For my first example, I've imported a NetCDF file of sea surface temperatures. I chose to import data for the month of July between the years 1880 and 2020. I then added a region of interest to the matrix stack and generated an intensity profile as a line plot. You can observe as I move the ROI around that the intensity profile automatically updates. I can even resize the ROI and the intensity profile will still update. Let's look at how we got here. I start with a new matrix book and from the data menu choose connect to file net CDF. I select my net CDF file and in the data connector browser I select my variable add it to the list of variables to import and I want to do a partial import. I want to start in the year 1880 July. I want to go to the end and I want to enable skipping. I want to read one record then skip 11. This will bring in July, skip 11 months, bring in July, skip 11 months and so forth. Once I brought my data in we can use a slider to navigate the records. I'll come up to the year 2020. Next, from the toolbar we add a region of interest right click in that region of interest and choose intensity profile. The quantity we want to bring in is the mean. We'll make sure recalculate is auto and click OK. This creates a new workbook of intensity data. That book is linked to that ROI such that if the ROI moves or is resized, the data gets updated. Let's create a line plot from this data. The main thing we need to do with this line plot is for the y-axis set its rescale to auto so it will automatically rescale as we move our ROI. From here we could customize the plot to make it more attractive. For my next example I'll bring in sea surface temperature data for two different time periods. I'll then get the mean of each time period and then calculate the difference and create an image plot of that data. I'll create a new matrix book. From the data menu choose connect to file net CDF. I'll select my sea surface temperature net CDF file, my variable. I'll select partial import and specify from 1880, July of 1880, to July of 1930. Again, we'll specify skipping so we only get the July data. Next, I want to generate um, the mean of this stack of data. From the matrix menu, I'll choose Descriptive Statistics. My quantile to compute will be the mean. I want to set my recalculate to auto. And I'll output to a new matrix window. I'll repeat this with my other time period. Create a new matrix. Data, connect to file, net CDF. I'll select the same net CDF file and the same variable. This time when I partial import I'll choose a different time period. July 1990 to July 2000. Again I'll skip and I'll repeat the the process of getting the mean. Descriptive statistics, quantile to compute, mean, recalculate auto, OK. So now I have my two mean matrix books and I want to subtract the 1880 to 1930 data from the 1990 to 2000 data. So I'll go to matrix, subtract, 
For A, I'll select the 1990 to 2000 data. For B, I'll select the 1880 to 1930 data. I'll make sure my recalculate is set to auto and click OK. And now we have a matrix book containing the difference data between those two time periods. I can go to the plot menu and choose contour image plot. I'll turn off speed mode and from the mini toolbar I'll select fit page to layers. Now I can select a color map. Let's customize this graph a bit more. I'll double click on it and set a missing values color. Now I want to add an attractive map overlay. I'll create a new workbook and from the data menu I'll choose the origin file connector. I'll connect to a file that we now ship with Origin 2020B containing map outline data. And in that file, we're looking for the country boundaries 0 to 360 variable. I'll click OK to bring the data into the workbook. It contains longitudinal and latitudinal data. And I simply have to perform drag and drop plotting to add it to our image plot. From here, we can customize our map by double clicking on the graph selecting the plot, choosing fill area under curve, inclusive broken by missing values, and in the pattern tab I'll set a fill color. For our final example I'll import some air temperature data for the year 2016. I'll isolate the country of Japan and we'll look at the seasonal changes for that year. Start with a new matrix, data, connect to file, net CDF. I'll select my air temperature net CDF file, select the air variable, select partial import, choose the year 2016, starting with January and ending with December. We don't need skip this time. Before I go further, I'm going to change my missing value color and add a color map. To change the missing value color, we'll activate the script window and run some lab talk. And now I'll set a color map. We actually want to shift our data. If you observe now, it's centered in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. We want to shift it to a more traditional view. We do that by going to the data connector icon, choosing select to reselect our data. We will alter the X parameter of our partial import. We want to subtract a value from it. In this case, that's minus 360. We get the 360 value by looking at the longitude portion of the variable. It lists 720 columns, and we want to take half that value, thus 360. And when we do that, we can see the center of our matrix stack has shifted. We'll zoom into Japan by holding down the control key and using our mouse wheel. To isolate Japan, we'll use our Region of Interest tool. We have different types of regions of interest. You're familiar with the Rectangle tool, but we also have a Circle and a Polygon and a Region tool. We'll use the Polygon tool. And I will draw a polygonal region of interest around Japan. Now when I right-click in the ROI, I can choose Create New. Setting my Recalculate to Auto, 
I've created a new matrix book with just the data from the ROI. We can use a slider to navigate through the seasonal changes in only Japan. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.